This is the Stock Trade and Reality Podcast, episode 60. Like, it blew my mind how much money I could lose in, in five minutes. I was like, wait, what happened? Like, I just literally, I felt the sweat running down my face. Like, once I lost the money, I was like, I just lost 300 bucks. This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, where you get to see the realistic side of a trader's journey. Get inspired and stay motivated by everyday normal people who are currently on their journey to trading success. And this is your host. If you want to really annoy him, tell him I don't have the time. I don't, man. I don't, I don't have the time. Oh, look at him get all red. Oh, that's awesome. Clay Trader. I am actually red in the face now hearing that uh, our public introduction guy, whatever you want to call him, the voiceover guy, took liberty to adding more towards what that fun fact was. But yes, I don't know if it's at the top, but it is for sure very, very close to the top. When people say, oh, I don't, I don't have the time. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And we've actually talked about this in past episodes of the podcast. But Ches, who is our co-host, Chez, are you aware that there's a thing out there called an alarm clock? Are you aware? Actually, I know you know this because you're on West Coast, so you're always waking up early. But uh, for people that say, I don't have enough time, it's just like, well, 5 a.m. actually exists. And if you're saying, oh, that's too early, well, it's still time in your day. So um, I think this one, doesn't this one kind of boil your blood a little bit too, Chez? I mean, the whole it, I don't have enough time excuse, because I know you have put in a lot of time uh, in your journey so far. Yeah, it, it, it more than boils my blood because right after I moved to California, got interested in trading, I was getting up. I know 5 o'clock exists for you, Clay, but you're also East Coast, so you know that's good. I was getting up at 4.25 in the morning to go to the gym by 4.40 so I could be ready to trade by 6.30. So yes, it exists. Are you going to go to, are you, are you going to not be able to uh, watch Game of Thrones until, you know, 12.30 at night? you're not going to be able to because I was asleep by like 9, 9.30. But yes, that time does exist. And when people say that, it does drive me absolutely nuts. Yeah, I, uh, you know, this is trading if you want to get into it. Um, and your excuse is, well, I don't have enough time. Maybe you don't. There's some exceptions to the rule, but in most cases, from my experience talking with other people, it's, no, you just don't want to put in the effort. I don't have enough time as your, you know, your mask of, well, I really just, I, I don't want to do all that work. I don't have enough time for all that. Well, I, I'm sure you do. And, you know, just to, so everybody understands that, you know, because that's true, I am on East Coast time. But when I put together the courses, the only time I can't do that when the markets are open because there's just too much stuff going on. The markets are open. That There's the chat room. There's emails. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. So whenever I'm in course mode, as I call it, I mean, I'm getting up at 5 a.m. every single morning. And courses take months and months to put together. So, I mean, it is literally months of time where I can't sit there. Well, I don't have time to put together a course. No, well, I guess I got to get out the alarm clock and wake up at 5 a.m. So um, if you find yourself using that excuse, please don't tell Chesra. I, you will find no pity. All you will find is probably a link to like Amazon to go buy an alarm clock. And I'm just going to leave it at that. So today we are going to talk with Dell. Um, he goes by Delgado in the chat room, but I think the majority of people just call him Dell. At least that's what I call him. Um, and we tried this interview once, didn't quite work out, but uh, due to technical difficulties. So this was kind of our, our second round, uh, but uh, a, a great, great interview. We had a good time. Uh, we talked some trash. Uh, we he called some buddies out on on the on, on air. We talked trash to Chez. I mean, there is trash talk all over the place. Um, we're actually re recording this after we did the interview. So Chez is he's wiped away a few tears over there. I've noticed, uh, but. Uh, you know, it was a good time, and I think not. I think I know there's going to be some definite things that people can learn from. Um, just to give a little spoiler, poor Dell wasted four to five months of his time, like totally wasted it. Just he would have been better off doing a lot of other things. Um, and you know, there's a valuable lesson in and of that. So, uh, like I said, good stuff here to come in your way. So let's get to it. Well, hey, welcome to the show, Dell. How are you doing? I am doing very well. Thank you for asking. This little context here, we tried this about a week ago, and then my internet was just really jacked up, so we had to totally reschedule it. I had to call the uh, cable company. They came out here twice, actually, and now I believe they finally got the internet figured out. Uh, so uh, Delgado, Del as we call him, has been very patient. So thank you for your patience and rescheduling. I want to publicly say that, so thank you very much. 
No, man, it's, it's my pleasure to be here. It's an honor. Uh, now, we t- I remember us talking about this last time, but I want to just, I can't totally remember, but we all call you Dell. But if I remember right, you said that nowhere else in your life does anybody call you Dell. Is that accurate? Yeah. Um, most people just call again, my first name is John. Most people call me John or Johnny. Most people don't call me by my last name because I have a million cousins who are all Delgado. So if you say Delgado, if I'm hanging with five guys, four out of the five are probably going to be Delgado. So, right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Del, it's a term of endearment. So I, I, uh, I wear it with a badge of honor. Yeah, no, that's why I like about our community in the chat room is uh, it's it's fun. It's funny to hear that nobody else in your life calls you that except a bunch of, I guess, people in the internet chat room. So that sounds <laughs> sounds kind of weird, but uh, yeah. it is what it is. And we always like to give each other a hard time about you know we're just a bunch of people talking in an internet chat room. Anyways, well let's uh, let's learn about your journey and uh, learn about kind of where you've been, where you're at, and where you plan on being. So let's start right at the beginning. What got you interested in the markets? And what kind of finally made you to decide to, uh, you know, take that plunge and get more hands on? I guess the first time I actually got exposed to the stock market was, uh, I think I was in seventh grade. Uh, actually, I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island, but uh, as kids, we moved to uh, Southwest Florida, the Fort Myers area, a couple of times. Um, we went back and forth. But in seventh grade, I was in Florida, and my seventh grade geography teacher actually. Uh, I kind of like geography, so I would pay attention, and he was probably my favorite teacher at the time. And uh, he would, like, every Friday or, or something along those lines, we had downtime, he would pass around the paper, and he kind of introduced us to stock market. You know, he told us what the, what the ticker symbols meant and what the numbers meant, and then he had us pick, uh, I think it was like pick five stocks that we would look at every week. And then, you know, you would either, at the end of the next week, you would keep it, sell it, uh, you know, cut your loss, so it kind of... It was real basic, but that was my first, my very first intro to it. Uh, no one in my family really dabbled in the stock market, so I couldn't, you know, turn to anybody and say, "Hey, teach me more." But uh, that was the first seed, I guess, that that got planted. Now, did I hear you right? Did you say you're geography teacher? Geography, yeah. So geography, as in like, this is what a peninsula looks like. This is what a cape looks like. Like that type of geography. This is like the state of Florida. That type yeah, of geography. Exactly. Cap- state capital, states, uh, country. So, exactly. Uh, so how, where, how in the world? What what does stocks have? Why 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 did this guy? <laughs> why was he talking about stocks? I guess. What did that have to do with anything to drag? Maybe I'm missing something here, no, but I I, I find I, this kind of super fascinating. I can't figure out what. Like, I can't remember exactly wh- how we brought the, you know, the paper out in the stock market, but it was just, you know, I guess we had downtime every Friday. We had like a quiz every Friday. So we, after the quiz, we had maybe 15 minutes before the bell rang and he just pulled out the paper one day and just passed it around. And everybody picked four or five, but like there was no like lesson like, oh, now we're talking about the state capitals and the state capital of whatever is a ticker symbol. No, I have no idea. There was no correlation there. It was just random. I think it wasn't random. What I think is this guy had a desire to be a trader, and he was like, "How can I sque- How can I check my stocks yeah. while I'm teaching?" I was just gonna say, you know, he was a speculator. You know, yeah. he was a speculator trying to make it big on whatever money he had coming from school. So yeah, he was definitely yeah. a, a, trying to be a stock trader whenever he could on uh, on company time. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. That, that's funny. I I, yeah. I I gotta say though, I'm pretty sure he was the coolest geography teacher in the country. Though I mean, to introduce the kids to you know, something as beneficial as the market is, even if it's just from an investing perspective, I'm not saying to introduce kids to trading, but from an investing, I mean, the sooner you learn about this stuff and the power of compounding and all that sort of stuff from an investment perspective, I mean, good on your geography teacher. So, all right, well, that was the first seed that got planted. And I'm assuming in seventh grade, you didn't have boatloads of money. (laughs) So when did you finally actually start to get more interested from a, Hey, I want to do something, you know, about it. When, when did that all come to be? Um, I think really after college, to be honest, like, you know, in seventh grade, I got that exposure. I would, you know, here and there, I would hear about it and about the stock market. And I started to get a little bit familiar with it, but, you know, on a very basic level. Uh, went to high school. High school, I didn't really pay any mind to it. I was more focused on video games and girls. Um, and then college, you know, it's kind of like real life starts to hit you and you start to figure out what to do. Uh, I went into college as a science major, switched over to business, and when I was switching over to business, you know, I, I had to pick another major, 
Um, so I wasn't sure where to go. And I thought about finance because, you know, the stock market always kind of something I wanted to do, just didn't know anything about it. But I thought, you know, honestly, I thought it was too complicated for me. You know, I wasn't good, good with numbers. So I thought, hey, maybe this is going to be a lot of numbers. Maybe, you know, it's not for me, stock market. I just didn't, you know, know. Then I started to read books here and there. Uh, you know, actually, I think Jim Cramer, to, you know, I know people laugh at him, but I always kind of uh, defend him because he made me money. You know, uh, he taught me the basics. Uh, I'm not saying he's the go to, but if you know nothing, he, he'll teach you something. Um, and then I uh, read a couple books. And then once the market tanked in uh, 08, 09 is when, you know, I was really reading more about Warren Buffett and just investors, you know, long term investing. And then uh, I kind of just kept on watching the market as it fell, fell, fell. And uh, Warren Buffett, you know, always says, you know, when people are, are are greedy, be worried, and when people are worried, be greedy. So I had at this time I had graduated college, uh, I had a little money saved up, so I figured, you know, I had a four hundred one k, but let me try to dabble, you know, here and there, investing, not so much trading, long term, you know, blue chip high dividend type of, of stocks and I slowly dip my toe into it. So you so you actually funded a trading account then you didn't just strictly trade out of your 401k at this time? Yeah, exactly. The 401k was separate. I I had uh I started with like five thousand dollars that I had saved up. I had more than that, but I figured that little portion of the money would be safe to put into it. So I think my first uh, stock I bought was like Verizon and Pfizer. I still, right. I still, I still own both of them, um, uh, and they've made me money. They've been making money, the dividend paying stocks. So yeah. I just kind of hold them. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool, and and I'm sure Clay would agree with this that you know most people don't even take an interest in the first place until they have to you know they start talking about oh you have these 401ks and you know you can pick what you want to do and um, stuff like that. But you know you actually funded a you know taxable trading account with money you had saved up just for kind of investing and stuff. And obviously the market was in complete turmoil at that time. So um, yeah, I mean what a what a time to be kind of getting into it. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah and I, I, I want to hop in here because you talked about Jim Cramer and I will say this, there's a big difference between what you were doing and what a lot of people do. You said you were watching Jim Cramer and you were getting ideas, but you also said you were reading books and you were like studying and stuff like that. So yeah, you're using Jim Cramer as like a piece of the puzzle, but some people, exactly. and what we're referring to is, is like, I want to get in the markets, click, there's Jim Cramer. Oh, I'm going to buy. And then they just totally blindly follow. You were following, sure, but at least you were following within the context of reading books and, you know, kind of having more understanding. So uh, yeah, there, exactly. there's a big difference between, you know, being a total blind sheep where you're literally not doing any other homework, any other research besides, you know, listening to what he has to say um, compared to what you're doing. So, yeah, I have, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd say you, you play that totally smart. And like you said, Verizon, uh, Pfizer, they're still making you money. And I think both those companies are going to continue to be around for a while. And so it sounds like they're going to can keep on making you money. So where did everything head from, you know, from, you know, this first uh, time you open up the account uh, and what year was this? Did, I don't think you mentioned just to um, get kind of a little timeline. I, I think my, I think it was Oh nine. Uh, okay. So literally maybe. you're when you, when you saw everybody freaking out about the meltdown, you were like, Hey, I, I want to get, I want to hop in. Exactly. Yeah, about Oh nine, I think 2010 when I kind of, you know, in no way it tanked, it came back up, it tanked again. Then Oh nine, yeah. I kind of, I saw that it was kind of just, I figured, you know what? Let me roll the dice now. Um, at, at that time, I already knew about you know stop loss, so I figured, you know, let me jump in at this point. I can't remember the price, but let me jump in at let's say it's twenty bucks, and if it gets to, you know, seventeen, I'll get out. Just you know, cut my loss. So I kind of already had an idea of what I was gonna do. I didn't know about technical analysis, but I already had an idea about you know support levels. All right, before I got to this price and it it bounced back, or before I got to this price and it couldn't get higher. So maybe that's, you know, those are the targets. So, you know, so me it sounds not, to me like you, you knew what support and resistance were. You just didn't know what were to associate with what you were recognizing. I mean, yeah, I noticed much. that the price would kept bouncing from that point. So that's a support, but you just didn't know what to call it. So, yeah, I mean, so from natural observation, uh, it sounds like you were making quite a bit of progress, um, you know, in the direction, already using stop losses and stuff like that. Um, so where exactly were you generating these ideas from? I mean, were you sitting there 
pulling out the newspaper like your geography teacher taught you to do, where you're using the internet? What exactly went into kind of structuring, um, you know, where you wanted to put your money to work? Um, again, I got to go back to kind of Jim Cramer a little bit. He he would suggest stocks, you know, and then I think I didn't really get stock picks from him. I got more about what I should be looking for. Uh, you know, these kind of these these stocks are in the trend. Uh, blue, you know, blue chip stocks. I I kind of learned all that lingo from him. What a blue chip stock is, you know, dividend. You know, what's that? I don't know. He he kind of mentioned it. So I was like, all right, this makes sense. Dividends they keep on paying you. And my strategy, you know, at the time because I bought Verizon, uh, Pfizer. I bought a couple other ones, but those other ones I jumped in, and then once they ran up a good amount, I kind of cashed out and just kept my my uh, my profits in it. It might have been you know two hundred bucks and let that compound with the dividend. So that was my strategy kind of going in, um, with more like short-term, long-term investing. Uh, so, uh, But really just kind of Jim Cramer gave me ideas. I would do my own research on stocks. Um, he would mention something. I would look at it. You know, Maybe I would try to play. Maybe I wouldn't. But really I looked at what stocks were the highest dividend paying stocks, the top 10. And then from there, you know, Verizon was one, AT&T. I know both of those are in the same industry, so I can't I have to pick one. Uh, uh, you know, Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson, those are both the same. I got to diversify, so I got to pick one. And so that's kind of how I went about picking my stocks at the time. Gotcha. Now, so so here's a good question though, because obviously I was going to ask you before you kind of answered it was, you know, what was your time horizon? Because I know initially you're talking about you know long term, and you still actually hold some of these names today, but you kind of had a little bit of a short term strategy where you know if you'd go into a certain amount of profit, you'd start taking it off and things like that to just kind of keep the ball rolling. Now, now let's you know those are in when things are going well for you. What about when uh, when trades didn't work out? Did you have any kind of losers during this time? Yeah, I did. I uh, traded uh, rig at the time, and rig was. You know, it, it was my own fault. This is when I learned learned about a, a trailing stop. Uh, rig was at I think I think I bought it at sixty bucks, and it ran up to to eighty five. You know, in a short period of time, maybe six months, seven months. Uh, I held it, held it, and you know, I had no stop, no alerts on it. It was just kind of oh, I was gonna keep on climbing. And then I started getting lazy and not checking it often enough, and not following you know what's happening with with the oil market, what's happening with this, what happened. So it started to tank, and one day, I, you know, I think it was two weeks. I didn't look at it, and it was kind of back to where I bought it. And then, instead of just getting out, you know, after seeing it at eighty-five, it was back to sixty. Instead of just getting out, you know, I started to hope and wish and and, and pray. Well, you got the, stubborn. I, I bet it sounds like you got stubborn. Like screw <laughs> this, man. Cocky. I was just up twenty-five bucks a share. I'm I'm not gonna. Yeah, I I can totally see how you'd all of a sudden not sell. Yeah, it was being, me being cocky. I think it was kind of like, oh yeah, this is. It's kind of like uh, I forgot who it was that said it in one of that. In one, of, I think it was Cubs. He said, "Oh, this is easy, you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick a stock, it'll go up. I'll, you know, it's going up. It's, it's going to keep on climbing. It, it can't go back down." It, For a little down. bit of a listener context here, Rig is currently trading at just under nine dollars. So, mm-hmm. so and yeah. he was trading it back when it was sixty bucks. So yeah, crazy. Yeah, so, so I bought it. At, it is funny because I got out at forty five. I think so. I took a nice size loss. Granted, I didn't have that many shares in it. But I still took a nice size loss, and that's really when I learned about you know okay trading stops. I gotta be, I gotta watch these stocks. I gotta put alerts in. I can't just kind of be passive. Yeah, that's uh, you know it's funny we talk about winning streaks a lot within the community and how they can be dangerous and all that sort of stuff. And I, it sounds like from an investing standpoint or a long term swing standpoint, like you were doing, it's all. I don't know if you were necessarily on a winning streak, but. It sounds like things were going very well, very well, and you were just you just got lazy. So your 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 overconfidence, your cockiness, whatever you want to call it, led to just complacency. Like, yeah, whatever. You know, I, I'm it, it's working. It's I got to figure it out. Like, I don't even need to check. Is that kind of a fair statement? Where you just thought a little bit too highly of yourself? Where you thought you didn't even need to you know check in that often? Yeah, it was. It's kind of like I just felt like, all right, well. Stock market always goes, you know, always goes up. So I can check every so often. At first, I was really on it, you know, every every kind of other day, I'm checking in, looking at stuff, and looking at news. And then I just got lazy, and it was up one time again. It was up from 60 to 85. 85. Instead of just taking my wins or taking some, I kind of just forgot about it. Well, it's gonna climb up to the next spot that I should go to is I think it was like 100 and something bucks. So once it gets there, I'll, I'll sub. And I didn't even bother to look at it till weeks later, and then that's when. Bad news happened, and uh, me being so naive, I had no idea what was happening. And then it just kind of, I think that's when the oil spill happened, uh, the BP oil spill as well. 
Okay. So that didn't help. And once I saw that, I think I, I think when I saw that on the news is when I said, wait a minute, I rig is associated <laughs> yeah. associated yeah. with oil rig. <laughs> Rigs in the oil industry. So exactly. yeah, maybe I should, that, that's funny. That's funny. So, yeah. all right. Well, at this point you're, you, you're kind of trading in a sense, uh, but what finally got you, you know, to the point where like, you know, I, I don't think I quite have it. I, I want to go into a, another direction or I need to keep building because it sounds like right now you had something going, you know, Jim Cramer would give you ideas. You'd go and research. If it would go in your direction, then you'd, you know, you know, take profits off. But what point did you want to, you know, start to actually get a little bit more active? What did anything happen to spur that or just kind of walk us through that part of things? Um, I guess it, I guess I always in the back of my mind wanted to do more like day trading, you know, be more active with my trading, watching, you know, watching movies like Boiler Room and things like that, like it got, it exposed me to like that kind of lifestyle. So I, I know I, I didn't want to be only an investor, long-term investor, you know, like I didn't want to buy and hold for a year. I want to, I know you can make money buying, you know, today and selling today. I knew that. I, I didn't know how. I didn't know about technical analysis. Uh, I kind of knew about candlesticks, but, you know, I don't know what it, what it meant. I just saw it before. And then, um, again, you know, I think uh, in 2000, around 2008, 2009, when I first started investing, or right after I started investing, you know, in these high dividend stocks, uh, a friend of mine who actually I, I grew up, I knew as a kid in Fort Myers, his two brothers, uh, one's Freddie, one's Gil, well, there's three brothers, but two of them are into the stock market. And the older brother, Freddie, he, uh, he introduced me to, uh, it's kind of people who, who teach technical, they I think it was called Trade Smart something um he had told me about it and i told him hey i'm, I'm already investing in the stock market but i'll look into it and it was more options and it was technical analysis and i kind of watched the free videos they had um i didn't really you know the course was pretty expensive it was a couple thousand bucks i wasn't ready for that um i had a full-time job that i traveled a lot so i thought i couldn't you know handle both or juggle both so i, I kind of started to that's that exposed me to the technical side he started Phone conversations with him. We would, we would speak for hours. Phone conversations with him. Would, uh, he would kind of t- t- tell me about it. And I would watch the free videos. And just familiar. I kept trying to learn about it. But then uh, I think 2012, I moved. I was living in Philadelphia right after college. That's where I'm because I went to Temple University in Philadelphia. Uh, once I graduated, you know, I spent a couple years there. Then uh, 2000. 12, I think I moved to D.C. for a year. And uh, I was there. I was still kind of just investing long term. And then at the end of that year, I moved to Fort Myers again. And that's where uh, those two brothers were. And they kind of allowed me to see the video that they had purchased. So similar to kind of your courses, Trey, like your kind of robotic trading where they would, uh, you know, show you support resistance, candlesticks. So they exposed me to that. Uh, I never bought the course. I kind of just freeloaded off of my friend, to be honest. And they got the, the 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 basic, you know, kind of robotic training type of, of lessons from them. Um, and then uh, I think, to, when I first wanted to get into options, after taking you know spending a couple of months watching these free, these videos and, and taking these courses along with my friend, uh, I kind of just, you know, wanted to find someone else because it was too expensive for me. I wanted to find a group. I, I got think or swim. I started to kind of learn the basics, how to how to trade, how to open an option trade, how to close one, uh, and then I just started to slowly paper trade pretty much for for a while. And this was maybe uh, 20, 2012, I think, is when I started to kind of paper trade a little bit. Now, now with these paper trades, though, how I know you're accumulating as much information as you can. You know, that's that's either low cost or no cost at all. And that's, you know, there's a lot of resources out there. The thing is that a lot of it's kind of scattered in various yeah. places and it's tough to keep it together. So, you know, options, you know, for the most part, it scares off a lot of people because of the complexity and how many kind of gears there are to kind of make the option pricing and what can change and impact it. So how did that paper trading go with um, with options? And also, were you making trades with the options based on kind of those basics of technical analysis that you had kind of learned earlier? Yeah, I, I was I, I was starting to learn, you know, the te- the, the, the technical side. I started to trade off it, so you know, if it got to support, and I think uh, uh, if you're new and you do a paper trading, I think trade realistically is, is advice I give people because I didn't really trade realistically. You know, I would take positions on that in real life. 
I would, you know, pee myself if I took it. it yeah, just you know, the hundred thousand dollar account. Oh, yeah, no problem. I'll throw, yeah. you know, a hundred, you know, contracts of the SPX. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I it actually went well, like the the paper trade. You know, even though my position size was, you know, not realistic, but I was making it was I was positive. Uh, so I think after four or five months of of of, of watching videos and in four or five months of uh, kind of paper trading, I started to see some success there, and I, I felt confident enough to try to put money on the real line on, on, on the line, real money on the line. But uh, that was probably my first mistake, thinking I, I was ready. I know I want to. I, I hope I don't want to go with my kind of punchline right here. But so you transit after four to five months of paper trading, unrealistically, so incorrectly, as you've admitted. How did it go when you went to real money? Um, like it's funny because my 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 first option trade, and I know I was just listening to a, a podcast right now where uh, you know it was with with Tesla, and folks say you know you're going to dive into options with Tesla. It's, it's, it's no, it's crazy. But it actually my account wasn't set up properly, so when I went to go make the trade on uh, Think or Swim, I guess I wasn't officially set up for options, even though I thought I was. So I had to wait a day. But that trade, it kind of did exactly what I thought it was going to do, which was kind of a, a curse, I guess. Uh, uh, Some fool's gold? Yeah, exactly. Fool's gold. It was just, I jumped, I, I, I would have taken it here and it did exactly what, I had three three targets to hit all three. I was like, oh, I would have made, you know, I pulled up my pen, I would have made uh, $3,000 in a day. Wow. Uh, just, the hindsight profits oh, are always oh, so my. nice when you jot them down and calculate and figure okay. out what you're going to buy with it. Yep. It's always nice. Yeah, hindsight. I'm I'm Johnny Buffett when it comes to hindsight trading. You know, it's it's uh, but you know that really was a detriment, I think, because the trade would have went right, and it might have been just pure luck that it went in my direction. Because Tesla, when it moves, it moves. Um, and then, you know, the next, I think, I had to wait a day. So two days later, this was uh, January of uh, I think it was 20, 2014, my first trade. And then uh, the next, you know, the, the actual real first trade was was Netflix. So I went from Tesla to Netflix. Yeah. Um, you know, and this was before, I think before it split. So it was like four hundred bucks. Uh, so that trade, I lost like three hundred dollars in five minutes. I was like, it blew my mind how much money I could lose in, in five minutes. I was like, wait, what happened? Like, literally, I jumped in, boom, down. Holy crap! Get me out. I'm out. And I just literally, I felt the sweat running down my face. Like once I lost the money, I was like, I just lost 300 bucks, like in a blink of an eye. And I just, it, it kind of was uh, the, the first step to a uh, self-destruction or something, or something along those lines. So this, the, here comes my punchline here is, and I'm, I'm not trying to rub salt in your wounds or anything, but <laughs> I, you literally wasted four to five months of your time because you admitted that when you were paper trading, which you should do, you're being unrealistic about it. And like you said, you know, if you if you treat paper trading totally realistic, maybe a bead of sweat, maybe. But if you're like you described it, holy crap, what just happened? Sweating, three hundred dollars gone in five minutes, having no idea what you're doing. That tells me that your paper trading wasn't even close to being realistic. So, I mean, a total four to five months. I'll give you kind of props there because at least you understood you needed a paper trade. But that was four to five months down the toilet. So brings up my point, you know, practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. If you're not practicing the right way, then sorry, you know, to be blunt, it's just a waste of time. And I mean, would you agree with that, Dell? Because uh, I mean, would would you, would you, is it an honest assessment of yourself to say that you pretty much wasted that four to five months? Yeah, definitely. That that quote you like that you use, you know, perfect practice makes perfect. It's, it's the truth, you know, like, First time I heard it, it was another podcast, and I was like, wow, it's the truth because, you know, you can practice all you want, but if you're not being realistic, if you're not, you know, if you're not feeling the pain uh, of, of it going against you or it going, you know, in your direction, that, 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 that heart, your heart rate racing, you, the, if you don't hear the voices in your, in, your, in your head, then you're not, you know, paper trading. It, it's, it's, a, it's a different world when you're real trading versus paper trading. So when you paper trade, make sure you're, you know, putting – I like you're putting real money in the line. Um, yeah, it, it, it's 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 easier said than done to to make the emotion to feel it. You probably won't feel it as much, you know, paper trading obviously because if you take a thousand dollar loss, you know, you can just hit the reset button. But if you play it as if that 
you know, you can only take $100 loss and that's your goal and you play it that way, you plan it that way, you, you, you trade the plan, then, you know, it, it definitely is more beneficial than just kind of doing what I did. We just, you know, taking big positions on when that's not what I was going to do with real money. Yeah. And, you know, it, it we'll, we'll link a, a video in the show notes where, you know, I talk about, you know, how to practice or how to paper trade properly um, and how to practice properly. And it all revolves around that, uh, you know, perfect practice makes perfect. Um, but I also want to bring Ches in here because Ches, you know, he's not brand new to the market anymore, but he's by no means a seasoned, seasoned vet. Uh, so, I mean, you, Ches, kind of new to futures, but I mean, were you, by the time you got to futures, Ches, you were pretty close to the totally understanding, I got to make this as realistic as possible. I mean, is it, walk us through in a nutshell, you know, kind of your little evolution of paper trading, you know, and, and if, you know, as short of amount of time as possible, but I mean, because this is obviously a very important topic, uh, because you know everybody preaches paper trading, but if you're not paper trading properly, well then, yeah, yeah, it's not going to do you very much good at all. If um, you know, so what I had done is I was trading advance options primarily, um, and what I started to do was I found out that you know I could very easily start trading. Um, futures with a certain amount of contracts. So what I had done is I would set up a paper account while my regular trades were playing out for the advanced options account. I would trade the same exact size that I still actually trade today, um, which is between two and three. And I did that for a couple months. And you know, just like you know, John had said, um, it's not. It wasn't the worst thing in the world when I went you know into a position. I was like, well, how did I just lose four hundred bucks in you know three minutes? Like, <laughs> I'd rather that happen on paper than you know happen in person right away. So. I just did that, and you know, I did that for a couple good months, and then um, eventually transferred over to live, and I used the same exact size as I did on paper. And I'm not gonna lie, it's the only time I've ever transitioned from paper to live, and I felt absolutely no different at all. I had done it for so long and put on hundreds of trades on paper that the same platform, everything was the exact same for me. My brain just kind of kept it on the same, you know, platform and level for me, so that was good. I didn't have any of those roaring, crazy emotions uh, that make me do something silly. So you basically numbed yeah. your brain uh, to the trans, so the transition was as smooth as possible. So, all right, Dell. So you're at, you know, you, sorry, sorry, buddy, but I, I'm just trying to get a point across to the listeners. You wasted four to five months of your time. How long did it take you to realize that? Wow, I still don't know what I'm doing. I mean, was it right away after that next Netflix trade, or did you need to experience some more pain before you actually realized, you know, things are not? I, I don't have this figured out. So you know, kind of walk us through that little kind of evolution of your journey. I think I was still stubborn at the time. You know, it was, I took a couple losses and then I had a couple wins that were, you know, nowhere near the size. Uh, I think those wins kept me in the game. They gave me hope, you know, oh, I got a win. So it was a small win. I took a $40 loss and made, you know, my win was 75 bucks. And I'm like, oh, this is great. So I just kind of kept at it, kept trading. I was losing you know, I was losing more than I was winning. Uh, I started taking big losses, you know, just hoping and wishing, pretty much. I wouldn't respect my stop. You know, if I actually traded my plan, maybe I wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't have been that bad because I maybe I would have took the loss, but it would have been a small loss. But I just let the losses, you know, run against me. Uh, my wins, I would cut them too, too, too soon. I was doing everything that you weren't supposed to do, pretty much. You know, yeah, it sounds like you're tr you're doing back. <laughs> Words of everything. Yeah. So whatever you were doing at this point, you were supposed to do the opposite. Is that a is that kind of an accurate statement? Exactly. Whatever successful traders were doing, I was doing not that. <laughs> I was not, I was not doing that. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. all right. So at what point did you say, "All right, okay, I'm done. I don't know what I'm doing." So what time did you put your stubbornness away? And then where did you go from here? I mean, did you uh, take a break? Did you decide you know I need to get some education? I mean, just what did you finally do when you? admitted to yourself that I don't know what I'm doing? Um, I think I, I knew I needed to get education, more education. Uh, the program that my, my friend had introduced me to, I just, you know, I just wasn't feeling, you know, for some, for some reason. I, like, I knew they had good stuff, but I knew it wasn't for me. Maybe I was just being cheap and it was like, oh, was, this is too damn expensive for me. Um, so I, I started to go online and started to kind of watch free videos of who can teach me. I was still trading here and there. Uh, real money and more, I think at the time, more virtual, just to kind of keep on, keep practicing. Um, but again, it, you know, it was, I was just losing, losing, losing. Uh, I had a couple wins, 
at the time that that kind of kept my hopes up. But uh, I think in uh, 2014, uh, that I think it was 2014. I thought I kind of came across your videos uh, online on YouTube. Um, I kind of just searched technical analysis, and your your videos came up. I started watching your videos, and you know, really what sold me on on on, on the on the inner circle was you said you know it's like a, a cup of coffee every week, and I drink coffee like every day. So I was like, no brainer. Of course, I'm gonna join this chat room because I'm gonna buy you know at least five cups of coffee this week. So why not spend one, you know, invest a little money on myself? And it was only hundred bucks. So I was like. I lost hundred bucks. I can lose hundred bucks in a minute trading. So why not just you know invest in something that might actually teach me something or put me around people who are on the same goal, you know, are on the same path. We're trying to trying to find a way to be successful. So um, I kind of joined Inner Circle, and you became a millionaire. Yeah, right away. It's over. You're in your mansion right now, and this interview is from your yacht. Uh, helicopter, helicopter. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, but it's it's funny, you know. I kind of knew I was in the right place because when I joined it, I didn't know what to expect as far as the chat room. I don't know what people were going to be talking about it. I kind of jumped in, just started to watch people, uh, see what people were saying. I, I took some trades off of some alerts people, just to see, you know, virtual trades, uh, just to see if it, play, if it played out. And one trade I took, it would have played out if I would have took my profits. But no, you know, I'm, I'm, starved, I'm too stubborn. I waited, waited, it went against me, and then I just held it until... Earnings came out, and I lucked out with the earnings and cashed out. But um, I knew I had a lot to learn after being in the chat room, after seeing what people were talking about, uh, getting to know some of the guys in there and, and gals and their 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 uh, their experience and their like kind of uh, their level of, uh, of of knowledge as far as when it comes to trading. So I knew I knew I had a lot to learn, and you know I knew I had to spend money on myself because. You know, no better money to spend than education in my mind. So, I want to stress you? something. Oh, oh go, go ahead, ahead Chaz. All you, Chaz. I was going to say, I want to stress, you know, the fact that John, even if he was trading off of alerts, um, he was using it for paper trading just to kind of see how it going. But at the same time, you know, he, John didn't join the inner circle and then start touting some stocks and how great of a trader he was. And he's a self, you know, pr professed guru of this and that. And, you know, he came in and he listened and he kind of, started to kind of get the feel for the room and kind of pick up who's been doing this for a while and who hasn't been. And at the same time, you know, just like you said, you know, inner circle, you know, if you're out a hundred bucks and the chat room's horrible, then, you know, that's not a big deal. You've lost more than that in 10 seconds before. So, um, but yeah, you know, at least it, it opens your eyes that, you know, the best investment in yourself, you know, the best money you're going to spend is investing in yourself because that can continue paying on to the future. But, um, now, what Chaz, are, what are you, I are you, Chaz, I, are you hinting at the prodigy? Is that what you're kind of uh, touching well, the, base on? Yeah, our, our, our day one day one member who's a, a prodigy, and that was it. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. we well, gotta Dell. You you know who we're talking about, right? You were on for all that. Didn't you for, see that? For what? For the pro the, the self proclaimed prodigy. Did you see that? I, I could have well, sworn I you had made some comments on it. I don't think so. I'm not oh, sure. Okay. All right. Well, just a little context. Maybe, maybe it's this, over my head. I'm a, yeah, I'm this a... kid shows up, and, and he's a kid. And he, I think he made like a good trade or a couple good trades, which anybody with half a brain is like, okay, that was pure luck. But You've been trading less than three months for content. Yeah, and he's like, and he, he literally typed in the chat room out, well, I guess I'm just a prodigy and this uh, and that, and I don't need anything. I mean, and everybody was just like, okay. And then he continues to talk and talk, and like he makes comments and this, and everybody's just like... I mean, I, to me personally, I, if you're a prodigy, cool. Own it. Say you're a prodigy. But then don't ask questions. Don't say things that make you look like a freaking moron. Like, no, that that's what somebody that's trading three months, those are the type of questions that somebody asks. So, um, But yeah, so to echo Chez's point to you, Dell, it sounds like you did it the proper way. I mean, I'm all for people showing up and talking and mingling and introducing themselves. Uh, but it sounds like you took more of the laid back approach. Let me observe and just see how things go rather than just, you know, throw yourself in and, and tell everybody how great you are. So, yeah, because, you know, again, I didn't know what to expect. So I, you know, I know what a chat room was, but I don't know what, a, you know, stock, you know, what are the guys going to be talking about? Your stocks and, you know, I thought it was going to be like people talking about PE ratios and I'm like, what's, what's going to be going? Like, it might be over my head. So let me right. just see what people are talking about. And I started to get the gist of what people were talking about, even if I didn't know the terms, like, you know, what's that wolf? 
for example. I kind of, someone would say wolf, and I would go to the chart and look at it, and I was like, oh, that's a, a shooting star. That's what we call it, a shooting star. Okay, I kind of know what that is. Or, you know, you know, if someone would say uh, trampoline, I didn't. I still haven't taken the trampoline course yet, but when I look at the, at the chart, I kind of assumed, all right, it meant, it meant this, or a launch pad, it meant this. I kind of assumed, and I was, I was right, but I just watched. You know, I just watched people for a good, you know, couple of days uh, before I really even, I think before I even said anything, uh, I kind of just watched everybody and it was like three or four days I was in there just watching. And then I started to, you know, ask questions and, and chime in here and there. So, uh, and I just got, you know, get to know the guys. They were pretty nice guys. Now, did, now did you ever to... experience any inner circle tough love or did you n- not ever really have to get any of that sort of stuff? Were you pretty humble from the get go? Uh, I mean, I was pretty. I think I was pretty humble from the get go. That's kind of why, honestly, Clay. That's why I kind of bought your calls because I felt like you were a humble person. I felt like you know, you weren't promising promising me to be. You know, how am I going to make me a millionaire in, in three weeks? You know, you weren't you weren't saying He's that. Just a guy in, in shorts and a t shirt sitting <laughs> yes. at his desk pressing buttons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. He, he's presenting himself in a t shirt. Like I was like, this guy's supposed to be in a suit or something, isn't he? He's talking about stocks. He's he's in a t shirt. He looked like he hasn't shaved in a couple of days. And That's I was, true. And I was like, and he, he's just like, you, you couldn't, you couldn't hate on, on Clay. I was like, man, this guy is keeping it, you know, a hundred percent. You know, that's what we say. He's keeping it real. I was like, you know, and again, that that, that sold me because I feel like I'm a pretty humble person. Yeah, uh, I come from a humble background, so it's, you know, I feel like, you know, he's not trying to steal my money. He's not trying to ask for a thousand dollars for the chat room. It was reasonably priced, uh, probably, you know probably too cheap almost, you know, and, um, and I kind of just got a positive vibe from, from you, Clay, and then from, as I, after I joined from the other, you know, people, besides Chez, Chez not so much, but, uh. Yeah, Chez is a scumbag. <laughs> I'm with you there, Dale. That guy, I don't even, whatever, I mean. I gotta, well, I gotta make sure he's still listening. I'm offering the discount codes for ChezTrader.com, so I'll <laughs> drop that in the show notes so nobody's looking. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, that's good. All right, Dale, so. Uh, you've been through quite a bit. You, you you stumbled upon us, and you know you've invested. You're a Clay Trader University member and stuff. So talk to us about where you're at right now. Um, are you? What are you trading? Uh, and just kind of, I mean, do you have any favorite strategies? We'll kind of open it up to you, but just let's talk about the kind of here and now in terms of where you're at in your journey. Well, you know, I guess after joining the chat room, I officially joined CTU. Started taking some of the courses. You know, robotic trading and uh, skill sharpening. I kind of knew, so it was kind of a refresher course, which I loved. Uh, I'm still going through the courses. I just finished the level two for the second time. I'm doing uh, risk versus reward for the first time. So it's been slow for me to kind of for the watch first it. time. You say? Yeah, for the first time. When did you start risk versus reward for the first time? Uh, I think it was last week, actually. Oh, Dell, because I I'm not I know you've been kind of in a little funk lately. Yeah, but so I, I, I think you're gonna have your eyes opened up. Qu- I did not know Dell. I'm not. And I'm I, not very happy with you. I was you gonna right say now. you're to being too nice right, right now. Without no, taking because, RVR, I'm not happy right now, Dell. Because I, I was trying to go through the courses, like you know, uh, the you know robotic trading, the uh, skill sharpening, and level level two. When I took level two, I couldn't understand it. I went through it once because I wanted to get to risk re, risk versus reward because I knew that was gonna be beneficial for me. Because like just just the name, I knew like you know I got it. And then in the chat room, everyone said, "Oh, you gotta you gotta take these courses." So I was trying to get to level two, and then I got through level two, and I still didn't get it. I was like, I can't just breeze through it. Let me do it again. So it kind of backtracked me, and, but but I'm taking it now, um, and you know, so far so good. I definitely think it's going to be beneficial for my trading. And where I'm at now, you know, I I had a I had a this size account. I kind of blew it. Uh, when I first started, I started with 10k. So you know, I started with 10k. I started to blow through that money, kind of up and down, up and down. After the first year, I think I was down like 60%. Uh, and then I started to slow down, started to go more paper. And then uh, in the beginning of this year, out of those 10K, I had 750 bucks. And then uh, I said, okay, let me really try to look at one stock and, and try to master it. Because I know, you know, I was trying to create a relationship with a stock. And it happened to be Tesla because I like, I like trading Tesla. I know it moves crazy. But uh, I had 750 in my account. I said, let me be more, you know, I wanted to just kind of make 100 bucks and be done with the day. You just try to set a goal for a dollar amount, which is probably not the best way to go about trading. But 
I just wanted to set some kind of target for myself to try to reach whenever I do want to make a trade. So I started with Tesla and I wanted to do only puts. You know, I wanted to, I looked at the trend. It looked like in the beginning of the year, it was, it was coming down. So I wanted to ride that wave as it went down. And, you know, last couple, last three weeks, I've been taking losses. But, uh, you know, I went from 750 in my account to, uh, I think it was last month, the middle of last month was 5,100 bucks. And then it went down to now I'm at thirty two hundred bucks. So I've kind of took a good amount of losses, uh, but I. And well, you're again, still I, up two hundred percent from your low point. So exactly. I mean, yeah. yeah. So and now you're taking RVR trading finally. So I'd like to think that uh, things will start to get that much better. So, uh, but yeah, well done. I seven fifty to fifty one hundred. I don't know what that is, but that's like what four hundred percent, five hundred percent. Chaz, are you a math that's genius? It. Can you do that real quick? I'm not. That's why I didn't get a degree in finance, just like John over there. So no, I'm not a math genius, but it sounds, but it sounds about you know over 400 percent there. That's uh, spectacular, honestly. Okay, yeah, it was it was a good run. I, I you know, it was no, it's not a good run. It still is a run. You're just in a little pullback of it. But I'm gonna issue this publicly, so that when this finally goes live, people can check in on you. So for you listeners in the chat room, I want you to ask Dell at this point. You are not allowed to trade any more real money because you have a job, right? Yes. Okay, so money will still be coming in. No more live trading for you because you're, you're, you've pulled back some three weeks. You're in a little funk. That's fine. Funks happen. But get through RVR trading, and while you go through it, just paper trade. So will, can you commit to doing that right now? Definitely. That's kind of what was my, my plan for the, you know, after I started taking those losses where I just kind of didn't respect my stops and just made bonehead mistakes, uh, I told myself, you know what, let me get through, you know, RVR and let me just virtually trade, you know, as if I was trading real money, one one or two contracts, just kind of virtually trade as I take the course. But real money, you know, I'm trying to preserve my capital. So and in other podcasts, I heard people say, you know, uh, the stock market is not going to go anywhere. Tomorrow is going to be there. A month is going to be there. In 10 years, it's going to be there. Uh, so, you know, I think that's one thing I learned, patience, you know, just don't have to trade every day, you know. You don't have to be in a trade, I, and that's something I had uh, an issue with. Like I felt like I had to. Once I started trading, I felt like I had to be in a trade. I'm a trader now. I got to trade. That's my, you know. That's I was trying to make it my profession, so I had to be in a trade, even if that meant, you know, taking losses and getting beat up. It just, you know, I just felt like I had to be in the trade uh, for no particular reasons because I just had the, the itch. So, uh, so now you know I'm kind of pumping the brakes. Uh, focus more back on my education, still virtually trading, just trying to, you know, keep my eye on the market, not lose my touch, I guess, but just trying to see if I can uh, slowly start incorporating some of the RVR stuff into my, my trading. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely not going to lose your touch because, I mean, that's the whole point of continuing to paper trade is it'll keep you engaged. Uh, you now know to keep it very reliable. So you, you've traded with real money, so you know how you trade with real money in terms of position size. So you just keep that position size on paper and you go through that, you get through RVR trading. And, uh, you know, um, when this goes live and when people say, hey, Dale, are you still paper trading? Because, you know, you're a good guy. You'll say, yes, I'm still paper trading. And probably by the time this goes live, uh, you, you'll be through RVR trading or, or if not very close. Um, and I definitely say, you know, you're in a good spot right now. Because let's don't be too hard on yourself. Remember, seven hundred fifty, and you're still at thirty two hundred. So that's still um, now. If you said you were at seven hundred fifty, and then you're at negative thirty two hundred, that's a mass problem. But that's not <laughs> what you said. And you you've been kind of we've beaten you up pretty bad, actually. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm taught I'm tell, I've told you you've wasted four to five months of your time. I, you know, I said I was not I was not very pleased with you because of RVR trading. But what are some things that you think you're doing well? Let's let's get some positives out there. Because I mean, it's not like you're doing everything wrong. So you know, if, some strengths. What are some things that you think, um, you know, so let's pay. I know you're a humble guy, but pat yourself on the back here. What are some, uh, you know, attributes, some things that you've been doing that you'd say, you know what, this, I'm on the right track when it comes to this sort of stuff? I think uh, me being my persistence, you know, just not letting the lumps I've, I've taken just kind of break me. You know, it's like where it's where it's like, oh, I took a loss. I've taken losses. I blew my account. I, I gave up. You know, no, it's, I know. I know it's for me, you know, you got to be like I'm passionate about it. And most people who know me, who, who talk to me about the stock market, you know, I can tell that they're bored out their mind. But it's like for me, it's like I'm, I'm loving it. I want to talk about it. So persistence, you know, the willingness to learn, I think, like I know I don't know, you know, enough. So I need to learn more. 
Um, and I think being more patient has definitely uh, something I kind of developed uh, as a trader because before I was just so impatient. Um, and again, on everything, you know, on taking wins, on 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 and taking losses, uh, and just kind of being in a trade. So I think being being patient uh, has definitely helped out, and it's definitely something that if you're a new trader, you need to to learn. Now, what about uh, what are, what are some things you're trying to work on? I think I need to uh, get a little bit better on my entries when I when I do take trades. I feel like sometimes I don't let the candle completely form. Let's say I'm looking at a 15 minute chart. I won't let it completely form before I say, all right, you know, it's, it's a wolf. Let me jump in. You know, it's a wolf right now. And, and 15 minutes later or 10 minutes later, yeah, it might be something 13 else. minutes later, it could be uh, you know, a full blown, <laughs> nice, huge green candle. But uh, speaking of charts, so I, I do know that you work full time. Um, now, what are you, your charts look like? So what time frame are you trading? And then what, uh, what type of indicators do you have on your charts or moving averages? When I, when I take a trade, I typically start with you know the weekly and work my way down. So I'll look at the weekly, three-year weekly, look at the daily, and I typically will trade off of the 15-minute or the five-minute. Uh, those typically are the ones I, I, I use the most to 15, 5, and 30, but 15 to 5. Um, indicators. Now, let know, me ask you this, though. Do you, so what determines whether or not you're going to use the 15 or the 5? Um, I, I I like the fifteen to kind of get in, to to see where where it's at, you know, and then the five really to kind of get out if if it's going to go against me or if, if I'm taking profits or if I'm going to scale out. I like to kind of zoom in a little bit more so I can see more of the action of the of the of the, of the candle itself. Uh, so those two typically are the ones I I use. Um, okay, I thought I thought you meant like some. Well, sometimes I use the fifteen and sometimes I use the five, but it sounds like you're going to use you use you use them both all the time. You just use them for yeah. different. Aspects of the trade is that what what you're yeah. saying? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, again, the 15 minutes is probably the one that I use the most. I look at the most, but sometimes I'll switch to the 15 minute. If if I'm gonna again, I think I'm got uh, about getting out of a trade. If I'm if it's going against me, or I'll get, I'll switch to the five minute just to see what it's doing in the five minute. Just you know, because it moves a little quicker. So I figured uh, it'll help me. You know, take my because I was trying to be aggressive as possible. I'm taking profits, um, especially with, with Tesla. I know some people don't trade the first 15 minutes of, of the open, but I like to trade those first few minutes because when it moves, it moves. You know, if you if you catch the right move, you got to be quick with it. Though that's that's the thing. If you're if you're kind of hesitant on, on executing the trade, getting in or out, then you know it can it can be up 200 bucks, and then before you know it, you're down 300 bucks. Um, so um, as far as indicators, I just use the MACD, RSI. Um, and pretty, you know, volume and just price action, but those are pretty much are the two that I, 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 I use the most. And moving, moving averages, I would assume. Yeah, moving averages. I use uh, the two hundred, uh, the hundred, and the fifty. And I use Bollinger Bands. Uh, I play a lot with the Bollinger, excuse me, Bollinger Bands. Uh, they help out. So those pretty much are the what I have on my chart. I just had to look at it real quick. So Bollinger Bands, uh, the fifty, hundred, and two hundred. And then MACD and uh, RSI. So it sounds to me like your chart's quite basic, and you don't have, you know, a million different. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think about some of the funky ones out there. But point being, your chart is very black and white in terms of all right. I got a few things, but I'm not going to bog it down with eight million other different, you know, gimmicks and indicators and overlays and. And your yeah. pitchforks and, you know, Pink Floyd laser light shows and that sort of stuff. So, um, well, well, good. Well, good. Well, looking at the time here, uh, we're, I don't know where it went, but are you going to be at the, the webinar tonight? Yes, I will be. Okay. So from a little context for listeners, we're doing this later on and uh, we have a Clay Trader University uh, webinar uh, tonight. So we got to actually start to wrap things up also from that perspective. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to steal Chez's question again and he'll get to steal mine, but Chez owns a time machine, and it, it's okay. We both know that, um, you know, he's a scumbag, like we established earlier. So we'll just steal it from him. We won't even we won't even ask to borrow. We're just gonna take his time machine. So if you took Chez's time machine and you could go back to maybe not seventh grade, uh, but when you were first getting started, what would be that one bit of advice that you'd give yourself? Um, I think it's kind of a you know just get educated first. You know, 
focus on your education before you kind of dive into it because you know you may get and and, and really you know practice too because you can get educated but you need to practice 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 sacrifice you know trying to make money now and think about the future because the better you get at trading uh, now obviously in the future you should you know that should compound and you just get better and better uh, so I just say get educated don't uh, you know don't don't worry about getting into the market. Uh, worry about getting into the market, you know, well educated. Um, because I think there's a quote I had somewhere where it says, you know, you know, aim yourself with a little knowledge and your aim improves. So, or, or excuse me, arm yourself with a little knowledge and your aim improves. So, just get educated and don't worry about, you know, becoming quote unquote a trader. Worry about becoming educated and then become the trader. And you I, also said practice, practice, practice. But I'm gonna offer a little. Correction, because I think this is what you meant. Practice, 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 practice properly or perfect, exactly. right? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and again, trade realistically. If if, if you're gonna paper trade, don't uh, you know, don't just make these big trades that you're not gonna make in real life. Because in real life, you know, big trades will make you know can make your heart explode. Yeah, I really like that uh, that quote about arming yourself with knowledge. I think that's pretty cool with the aiming, but. Um, so since my, you know, I've I've been completely ransacked and my time machine is in my, my empty shed now with the lock bolt cuttered off because Clay is a savage. Um, the most important question on the entire podcast and will always be the most important question to Clay is, what is your favorite movie? Um, it's funny, my, honestly, my two favorite movies, Clay, I'm not saying it, are Braveheart and Dumb and Dumber. Those are my two favorite because Dumb and Dumber was filmed partly in Providence, Rhode Island, so I'm biased. <laughs> So when I saw I that, when you said you were from Rhode Island, I was yeah. just like, <laughs> I was gonna bring up Dumb and Dumber, but like, I'm pretty sure that's kind of like, I don't know if racist is the right word, but like, am I stereotyping him to like, so the, whatever? The but yeah, I did yeah. immediately think of Dumb and Dumber when you said you grew up in Rhode Island. I'm just like, oh yeah, that's where, yeah. So that, that's great. Yeah, Dumb and Dumber when it, when it first came out, like we were living in in Fort Myers, so we went to go watch the movie. You know, I was a big Jim Carrey fan, but we had no idea it was filmed in Providence or part of it. So when in the opening scene is downtown Providence and it's me and all my brothers and my cousins and when we saw the movie we jumped up and started to shout and it was and people looking at us like what the hell is wrong with these people <laughs> but yeah but uh shout out to everybody in Providence man I, I I love I love my little city but uh but yeah Dumb and Dumber and Braveheart but one other movie I like is uh City of God um uh, it's it's set in, in Brazil it's kind of a, like a gangster movie I guess but yeah it's more like a documentary isn't it yeah, kind of Kind of, it's 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 actors, but I think it's based off of real life, so it's kind of a documentary, but it's not, you know, it was act it was acted out, but yeah, uh, yeah. it's a true story. And I don't have a quote for it because it's all in uh in Portuguese. I speak Spanish, but uh, no Portuguese here. Nice. So, well, you have to at least give a Dumb and Dumber quote. I mean, that's the that's the policy around here. If you say Dumb and Dumber is your favorite movie, you have to prove it by giving at least one quote, and I will piggyback off it. So you pick anything in the movie, and I'll see if I can. Uh, Take it from there. Well, I think my favorite line, everybody's favorite line is, so you're saying I have a chance. That that line is like, it was a lie. When, when, when I first saw it, I was like, Jim Carrey is the stupidest man alive. Yeah. But uh, but that's probably my favorite line, I think. I what know. are the odds that a girl like you and a guy like me can get together? Not good. Not good <laughs> like one in a hundred. I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yes, that's an excellent. <laughs> that's excellent. classic, classic, yeah. classic. Yep. I, I love Actually, it. I think he, he, he flips it. He says, what are the chances of a guy like you and a gal like me getting together? I think that's one of those little hidden things that they throw on there. But anyways, we're getting way off topic. What, what do you like to eat food-wise and dessert? Um, I grew up in a Dominican household. My parents are from Dominican Republic. So anything Dominican food-related, I love. Uh, there's a dish. My parents have a restaurant in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, it's called Pito's Restaurant. And um, they make, it's called chicharrones, which is pretty much deep fried pork with juca. Juca is like a potato. So chicharrones uh, with juca. So if you guys ever come to go to Providence, you go check that out. Any Dominican restaurant near you, you ask for that and you'll be taken care of, hopefully. Very good, very good. Now, what do you do for fun or hobbies outside of trading? Um, I like to read. I'm a big reader and I like, I try to read as many books as possible in a given year. Um, I like to travel, even though I haven't been doing that much traveling, but I like to see not so much the world. I haven't really been outside of the uh, U.S. besides, uh, I've been to the Dominican Republic, I've been to Puerto Rico, but you know those are pretty similar. Uh, but 
traveling around the U.S., I like to see different cities and just uh, see the see the U.S. Cause it's so different everywhere you go. Now, are you going to come up to Pittsburgh for our next meet and greet? Then, since you like to travel so much, uh, I don't know about Pittsburgh. It's not on my uh, to visit list. No shot. No, Doc no, and Darren no. knocking it, and Ricky. Woo! You just. We've had three people from I've Pittsburgh been, on here. They are going to rough you up. Well, I've been, I've been to Pittsburgh before, like a pit stop. I, I, uh, oh, now you're calling Pittsburgh a pit stop. It's getting worse and worse. But I'm more, well, I'm more of a Philly guy. I'm, you know, I've been, <laughs> I spent 10 years in Philadelphia, so I'm more of an uh, East Coast yeah, guy. This, you're yeah, not going to be safe if you come to Pittsburgh after those <laughs> yeah. words, so maybe it's best. Yeah, well, yeah that's, a, that, that's good Well, I lived stuff. in Philadelphia for, for 10 years, and that's a – if you can live in Philadelphia for ten years, you can you could be safe anywhere else. I think. Yeah, I'm learning that all these that northeastern part of the country, all the big cities that are actually relatively close to one another. I mean, you all take pride in kind of just beating each other up over the head. But anyways, that's good stuff. So our final question here: uh, three words, and these three words would need to be: How would you describe what you what would you associate with a successful trader? Um, I think you have to be passionate about it, about uh, just trading in general. You got to be committed. To trading because it's it's gonna beat you up. Um, you gotta be disciplined. Uh, you gotta make a plan, stick to the plan, and play your plan. But uh, I think those three are kind of describe describe me. And I think uh, uh, hopefully I can get my skills up to par to get the successful part in the trader. Well, again, seven hundred fifty dollars. You're now at thirty two hundred. You're doing quite well. But I like that passionate, committed, and disciplined. Well said. So, well, Dell, um, we got a webinar in like 29 minutes. So, uh, but hey, in all seriousness, thank you uh, for hanging out and thanks for sharing your story and just being honest about everything. Uh, you know, really appreciate it. Yeah, definitely, man. It's a pleasure to be here. And, uh, you know, I have a couple of buddies who are probably going to listen to this and I always try to tell them. You want to give them a shout out? I mean, you're more yeah, than welcome I, to. No, actually, my buddy, he's, he's, he's CTU. His name's uh, Gilberto. He lives in Providence, Rhode Island. He, he, he paid, he bought CTU. He doesn't, Jump in the chat, doesn't do the webinar. So I'm calling you out here and you know, we're gonna start calling you out. We need to see you in the chat room. Bring Roberto your Roberto is his name? Gilberto. Gilberto. Gilberto, man. You better get into the webinars. <laughs> Come on, man. You got I his expect you to going see to you in the next one. Yeah, his money's going to waste. So, you know, um, you know, he, he must have a money tree. Hey, Gilberto, at least send me those seeds to the money tree that you got growing in your backyard if you're not going to come to the webinars, all right? <laughs> Chez, do you want to – Chez, call him out real quick. Let's see your trash talk skills. I'm not going to call him out. I'm just going to say I'm going to intercept that package of uh, the money seeds that you're sending to Clay so that Clay doesn't have any. He doesn't need them. Yeah, he gets right. his, he gets his cup of machine, coffee though. per week. Yeah, he's got, got your time, time machine, machine and so. his cup of coffee per week. Yeah, yeah. yeah all but, right, well – <laughs> this, no, this has been a fun time, um, and thank you again, Dell, for all you listening. Hopefully, you had a good time with us uh, for this episode. So, I'd like to make a few requests. First, if you're listening to this on the website, uh, leave us a comment, click that share button. Little things like that go a long way. If you're listening on iTunes or any of the other uh, podcast listeners, um, but be sure to subscribe, leave us a rating, especially on iTunes. Uh, you know, things like that really do go a long way. And when we see that people are continuing to rate, continuing to subscribe, um, you know, that really does help out. Um, and it lets us know that, you know, we're uh, we're having a good time, but we're also spending our time wisely. So thank you again. And as always, um, you know, trade without emotion out there. Um, practice properly, as we learned. And uh, just uh, we'll see you back for the next episode. This has been the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. To learn more about Clay and the Clay Trader community, including the trading team, premium training, and more, visit claytrader.com.